or Numbers, the 20th chapter of Numbers is where we're going to base our theme on tonight. And now we have about four more Bibles. If anyone wants to study with us, some of the elders will be glad to bring you these four extra Bibles here. Anybody want a Bible, just raise your hand. All right, here's some right here, Brother Fleeman. If you'll come and get, get them and pass them as long as they last. Numbers. Numbers, the 20th chapter. We're going to take this journey out of Numbers pretty soon because it gives more in detail than Exodus gives. And um, the account. And we want to begin about the seventh verse and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together. Thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall bring forth his water. I want you to notice that. It shall bring forth his, personal pronoun, his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock so Thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered together the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Here now, ye rebels, must we fetch ye water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand. And with his rod, he smote the rock twice. And the waters came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. Now, no man is eligible to open the Word of God. In the Bible, it said that even one come and as a one slain from the foundation of the world, a lamb, and he was the only one who was able to take the book, to loose the seals, and to open the word. Now, the Holy Spirit that Jesus sent back in his place to abide with us until he comes again. Brother Neville, will you stand and ask God to meet with us now and to bless his word as it goes forth, if you will, and may ask him to come and help us now to explain his word while we bow our heads, if you will, in the word of prayer. Our Father, again tonight, we come before you in true humbleness, the Lord realizing that human sufficiency is inadequate to meet the spiritual needs of this flock that thou hast congregated together by your decision. True. And Father, as I stand here tonight, a mediator, not by my decision, but by your choice, an elder of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ by the authority of the Holy Ghost. I ask you in Jesus' name tonight to look upon us in, a, in that degree of mercy yes. in which we might be able to find favor in your sight. Yes. And this, my brother and fellow traveler and fellow minister, yes. whom you call from his mother's womb, Father might be able tonight to open the Scripture yeah. by the Holy Ghost Grant it, Lord. as the one that is the administrator of this great flight. Grant it, Lord. Father, not for much speaking here, but because the favor that we found through your crucified Son tonight. Yes. Look upon us and rebaptize us with the revitalizing power from heaven. Granted. Open our minds to the scripture and may our hearts burn within us as we commune together concerning these things that you've given. Oh, our Father, tonight now let us settle down. Great God in the meditative spirit under the blessed canopy of heaven tonight. Visit your people. Teach us out of the word. Oh, subject every every thought that would be transitory tonight. Yes. 
great God set our minds and give us a wonderful blessing tonight. And now, Father, for all of this we're asking, in Jesus' name, we'll give you the praise and honor and glory for it. Amen. 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 There would happen to be a stranger in our midst. That's our pastor here, Brother Neville. He's developed a little hoarseness in his throat, and that's the reason we haven't heard much of him the last couple of nights. He's kind of asked to be silent as much as possible uh, for that cause until his throat has a chance to, to, to he has a chance to recuperate again. Now, we have been studying uh, the book of Exodus. The Exodus is the calling out of the children of God. They were the people of God as long as they were in Egypt. But when they had their Exodus, they become the church of God. For the church, word church means called out. And we believe that we're near a Exodus tonight. You believe that? We're near another exodus, a calling out, separating, making ready. Now, <clears throat> I believe I'm, I like and have been accused of being, in which I, I am, a typologist, because I believe that all of the old things were a shadow of the things to come. The Scripture teaches that. And if we can have some vision... And look what the Old Testament was. We'll see what the Old Testament is. Or what the New Testament is, rather. See, the type, they were for shadows and for examples that we might know what to do. See, how they fell and how they rose and what they did as they served God. And it serves as a shadow for us. Now, the first night, Wednesday night, we picked up the church. To find out basically what the church was. And now in the healing campaigns, and this is the first time I've had a revival in seven years of this time. Seven years. This coming week I left the tabernacle and went out into the evangelistic campaigns of healing services. And I've committed to managers who's done the preaching mostly. And I would only speak on the subject of divine healing because we were a mixed audience of Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholics, Orthodox, Jew, everything. And sometimes if you tramp on people's ecclesiastical teaching, it'll make the ministers keep the people away from the church, some of them, that really needed to come to be prayed for. So I just closed in on everything but the great evangelical fundamental teaching of the Bible. <clears throat> Death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. You know what the fundamental evangelical teaching is. But now, in the tabernacle here, at my little church that the Lord gave me 20 years ago, uh, I feel free that I can teach what my convictions is. And then, and um, we don't have any membership here. We just have fellowship. One with, you're a member here while you're here tonight. You're a member. We don't have any, any members, just fellowship. And we, now, in here you might find things that you say, Brother Branham, I don't agree with that. Well, now, if you don't, you, do, you use the same method I am when I'm eating a great big cherry pie and find a seed. I don't quit eating cherry pie. I just don't eat the seed. I just throw the seed out and keep on eating cherry pie. Or when you're eating chicken, it's got to have a bone in its leg, you know. So don't throw the chicken away because you hit the bone. Just throw the bone away. And what you think has got the bone or the... Well, you just throw it away now and you take what you think is right. Now, we find that God's church is not the will of the people. It's election. Election is in God. God called Abraham the founder of the faith beginning. God was the founder, of course, but Abraham in the beginning was called out of Chaldea, city of Ur, out of the plains of Shinar, not with any merits of his own. God saved him unconditional and gave him the promise of all his seed unconditional. Jesus, when he came along, he said, no man can come to me except my father draws him. You didn't have nothing about coming to God then. God drawed you to Jesus. 
And all that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death unto life. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood hath, present tense, everlasting life, and I'll raise him up in the last days. That's what he said. So I'm just quoting his word, and I believe that it is the truth. Therefore, I believe that God set examples. He saved Abraham unconditional. He made a covenant with man, and man always breaks his covenant. But man has always tried to find some way to save himself, trying to make himself. It comes from a strain. In the Garden of Eden, when man realized he has sinned, he tried to make himself a religion, a covering. The word religion means covering. And Adam and Eve sewed fig leaves together and made themselves a religion. And since then, it's been a strain of man down through the age trying to do something to save himself. But you are saved by grace, election, God's foreknowledge, predestination, foreordination. Paul tells the church at Ephesus that God predestinated us in Christ before the foundation of the world. Amen. Think of it. Predestinated us in Christ before the foundation of the world. What we worried about then. Get away from the weary. We're just the happiest creatures you've ever seen. My, how can you believe that and keep from being happy? I used to see old Brother Bosworth, and he said, Brother Branham, I said, how are you feeling this morning, Brother Bosworth? He said, the same old trouble's back on me, Brother Branham. I said, the same old trouble, what is it? He said, just the so happy I can't sleep. <laughs> I said, he said, Brother Branham, how can I believe what I believe without being happy? See, that's right. You know that Christ has already took your place as a sinner. He died. God accepted him. He rose again, sitting at the right hand of his majesty. God said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And there he is, the, the door, the gate, the way, the truth, the life. And how do we get into him? He is the church. The church has everlasting life. It's already foreordained to appear without spot or blemish. God's done said it would be there. It's going to be there. Now, God done said so. So then how do we get in the church? By one membership? No. By shaking someone's hand? No. Some form of bat? No. By one spirit? Are we all baptized into one body and become members of that body? 1 Corinthians 12 says, By one Spirit are we all baptized into one body and become members of that body. By how? Spiritual baptism that inducts us into the body of Christ. And then we are filled with God's Spirit, sealed to how long? Ephesians 4.30, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed until the day of your redemption. Not from one revival to another, but until the day of your redemption. Amen. Everlasting life. Everlasting just isn't a little a space of time. Everlasting is eternally forever. Can't die. No more than a grain of corn could become a cocklebur. And if a man's born to the Spirit of God, it's automatically he lives a life. As I said the other night, drinking, smoking, gambling, drink. Cursing, swearing, that's not sin. It's the attributes of sin. It's because you are a sinner the reason those things come forth. But if you're a believer, those things can't come forth because bitter and sweet water can't come to the same fountain. A cucklebur could a corn of wheat couldn't bear cuckleburs <laughs> because the nature of it is wheat. It's got to produce what it is. And if the Holy Spirit's on the inside, it produces the life of Christ. Amen. Amen. That's faith. Amen. All right. Now, then we find that we watch in the shadows now, and we find then God give us example. Christ and every one of the patriarchs are down through the age. In Abraham, God had election. In Isaac, justification, calling. God called Isaac. 
even before he was born, gave him his name, everything, just like he did Jesus. Then I noticed Isaac perfectly. We didn't have time to catch it. But did you notice Isaac, the only son of his father through promise, packed the wood up the same hill, loaded, tied his hands, offered up as a sacrifice. And when he started to take his own son's life, Abraham, a little animal bladed, a little sheep ram, hooked, caught in the wilderness by its horns, and the Holy Spirit crying from heaven, Stay thy hand! And he went and got the lamb and offered in his stead, which was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. There you are. Beautiful picture. Call election in, in Abraham, justification in Isaac, grace in Jacob. Anybody ever read Jacob's life? No, you have to believe in grace. <laughs> grace in Jacob and perfection in Joseph. Nothing against him in the Bible. Perfect man. Perfect of Christ. Then we find out that the patriarchs all went out into Egypt and there... They lived and their tribes sprung up and they covered the lands because God promised it to Abraham. God's word must every time be fulfilled. The cogs of God's prophecy grind slow but sure. If you do wrong, you think you're getting by. But just remember, young man or woman, it's going to grind right up to your door one of these days. You wonder when and how, but it'll be there. You'll reap what you sow every time. God spoke it. It's got to be so. That thy word is settled in heaven forever. Amen. It's already said. They don't argue about it up there. No. It's already settled. We argue about it. Hey. But in glory is settled. When God says anything, it's got to be. Well, isn't that wonderful? Can't you just settle it in your heart tonight? Lord Jesus, I believe you. That settles it. Hallelujah. I'm coming now. I want you to give me the baptism of the Spirit and you'll get it right there. All right. Then forever God will seal you by the Holy Spirit until the day of your redemption. All right. Then we notice in the next night's lesson we find Joseph making a mentioning of his bones and how perfect he was typed in Christ even to his robe. Everything. Everything so far has perfectly been fulfilled in Christ. Notice, he was the final human being, the final sacrifice of Abraham's seed. We found that, didn't we? When he made the sacrifices on the hill and the little light went between it and confirmed the oath, God stood there and made the oath on Calvary. He'd taken the oath and tore the scripture, the, the writing apart, took the one part as we found that them days in the way of making a covenant as we today shake hands in India or I believe it's China they pitch a little salt on one another and many times they uh, give a child to one another for a, a confirmation of an oath but in the oriental times they wrote it out on paper and they killed a beast and stood in between the dead pieces of beast tore the piece of paper together hand to each one and when that was brought together, each piece of that paper must dovetail with the other. Beautiful. God took Christ at Calvary, tore him apart, soul and body. He sent it, the body up to his right hand and sent the Holy Spirit back, the covenant with the people. And you believe by faith like Abraham did. And he was given the seal of circumcision for a confirmation of his faith. And you believe and accept Jesus as your Savior, then God gives you the baptism of the Holy Ghost as a confirmation of your faith. Amen. You say you believe and haven't received the Holy Spirit. Something wrong with your faith. That's right. hey. God circumcises the heart the minute the f believer really comes in full surrender. Amen. Hey, man. Say, that for surely must have done something. I felt that he can come back. Get it? When the believer, here it is now, when the believer firmly believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, God's under obligation to give him the Holy Ghost. Amen. Confirmation of his faith. Say, what's the matter, Brother Branham? Just your faith, that's all. 
If you truly believe God's there to give it to you, while Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them and heard the word. Is that right? Amen. Acts 10, 49. Amen. All right. Notice, the Holy Ghost and fire came from heaven, burn out all the dross, circumcise the heart, cut off all the surplus, and become a new creature. Now, then we find that after 400 years, last night we had the type of the patriarchs got back in between the lines and see why they wanted to be buried in, in promised land. Did you like it? Enjoy that? Why? Now, that's not written right there, but you see it. Like we was talking of Abraham and how God took Sarah and Abraham when he was 100 years old and turned them back to a young man and woman again and give them this baby. That was kind of hard to see at first, but after you look at the Scriptures, look down there and find out what's taking place, you see it's the truth. What was he doing? Confirming his word that someday we who turn old and gray and wrinkled, someday we'll spring back to a young man and young woman again. God gave us life and we come to the maturity. Death set in, taking us away. But all that death can do is take us away. Then it's finished. Then all the, the old doubt and part and everything, it's like the man life in there has gone out. Then there's nothing left but perfection. What this body was when it was in perfection, what God intended when it resurrects in the resurrection, it'll be perfection. Amen. Amen. Oh, when I think of that, my heart just turns flip-flops. Yeah. It's not just a mythical dream. It's thus saith the Lord. God said so. Then I base my life right there. Yes, sir. God said so. That settles it forever. <laughs> It's settled in heaven, and if a little piece of heaven's in our heart, it'll settle it there. That's all. That just makes it all right. God, you said so, I believe it, and that's just all that's enough. Now, now we bring them down just before the journey, and we find out there that when Moses, we got it last night, coming down into the herding Jethro's sheep, and we come to find out that God spoke to him, and Moses wanted to see his glory, and God showed him his glory. And it was performing miracles and divine healing. Is that right? Yes. That must be God's glory. Yes. Talk about the kind of glory we ought to have it tonight. And brethren, we're all Christianum is looking for the coming of the Lord and the rapture of the church. All it's got uh, any knowledge of the word. Well, if we can't have faith enough for divine healing, how are we going to have rapture in faith? Oh, I believe there's a great calling coming for us. I believe as David said, he laid there and waited until he listened and waited. After a while, he heard the Russian wind going through the mulberry leaves, going on out. He knew God was going before him. Oh, brother, I'm listening for the rushing of the leaves, the noise in the mulberry bushes, God going before the battle. Then let's rise and put on a full armor of God, pull the sword, go after it. The battle belongs to us, then. When we see the hand of God moving on through signs and wonders, let's start following on. Now, later we find out that Moses got all busy in his clergy work and he forgot something. The most fundamental thing that he, that he, that he should have done, he forgot. He was taking, right on the eve of deliverance, he was taking his son down in Egypt uns uncircumcised. And Zipporah, God would have slayed him in the end, but Zipporah circumcised the child, the seal of the covenant. You see it? Before there can be deliverance, Every person must be in the covenant because God's got a covenant today. And so Zephora circumcises the child, the covenant, and turned the wrath of God. And friends, today, all of us are having great revivals or trying to have, but we're forgetting God's seal of the covenant. Amen. The Holy Spirit. The rejected stone. The very, the mortar that mixes and sticks the blocks together. How are we going to do it without that? 
God said it will come to pass that I'll write my laws upon the tables of their hearts. Precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, hold fast to that what's good. With stammer lips and with other tongues will I speak to this people, and this is the rest. Isaiah 28. All this they would not hear, turned away, wagging their heads. Man fighting his way to destruction. Then we find that after the wrath of God had been turned away, they are down in Egypt now to deliver the children of, of Israel. I think this is a beautiful chapter. I must read just some of it anyhow, if we don't get to all of it. The 12th chapter, let's begin now, of Exodus 12, reading and hurrying right along. I'll try not to wear you out because we've got a long time to go yet. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron. I'll wait just a moment so you'll be sure to get the reading of the Scripture. For if you miss it, such beautiful types. I love it. Now here's the sacrifice we're going to speak of now. Now they'd had plague after plague. God had performed all kinds of miracles and signs. Oh, how I'd like to ride on that a little while. God, just at the eve of deliverance, began to show signs and wonders and miracles. See? God is always a living tense. He told Moses, I am. Not I was or I will be, I am now, present tense. And he's the same I am tonight. Yeah. Not I was back there, I am. Amen. The angel of the covenant, still the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same angel. Notice now, here is the last. It had fleas, it had flies, it had boils. And I want you to notice, they had impersonators. Jambres and Jambies trying to withstand them, done the same things that they was doing until it went so long. In other words, they was preaching the gospel. They were going on trying to imitate like Moses and Aaron. But I want you to notice another thing. If you that's going to read now where we left last night from the 6th to the 12th chapter, these magicians, they could bring the things, but they couldn't take them away. You notice? Yeah. Who was that guy the other day trying to pin knife the Bible and saying the devil could perform miracles of healing? That's wrong. God said, I'm the Lord thy God who heals all of your diseases. Jesus said, if a house be divided against itself, if Satan cast out Satan, then his kingdom's divided. Don't you underestimate the devil. No. That's right. No, He's too smart for that. Satan ain't going to cast himself out. He just got you confused, that's all. No, sir, Satan can't cast out Satan. Me cast myself out. Well, I know better than that. Notice, don't you underestimate Jesus Christ either, because he's a power over all powers. Don't be afraid of Satan as long as you're in him. But if you're not in him, you better tremble. But if you're in him, not even death itself can harm you. You're free from all fear. Oh, when I think of that, I want to shout hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. All right. Now we're coming down to the last plague. Last thing. God said, I'm tired fooling now. I'm going to give the last plague. Now I want you to notice the last plague was death. Amen. Now we've had earthquakes. We've had wars and rumors of wars. We've had tidal waves, as Jesus said would be, a sea roared. Man's heart failing, more heart trouble, number one disease. Fear, perplexed of time, distress between the nations. Horseless carriages in the broadways, all these things fulfilled. But the last plague is death. Not physically speaking, but spiritually speaking. Death spiritually in the church. You notice it was amongst the sons. Spiritual death. The church has got more members than ever have, thriving better than it ever did. And yet the weakest in spirit at it ever was. 
It's true. That's just like it was in Egypt. Now notice the last thing, but before, oh, amen, before God let the spiritual death reign, He made a way of escape for those who wanted to. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love that. God making a way of escape for those who desired to walk in it. Now, those that didn't desire, all right, they, they got death. Notice, now the twelfth chapter of the first verse, Moses, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you a beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year unto you. Speak ye to all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take er to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. If the house be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to the eating shall make the count for the lamb. The lamb shall be without blemish. How beautiful. A male. The first year. The first year. Watch. Ye shall take it from amongst the sheep and the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the... That'd be four days. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Watch the type. The Lamb, figuratively speaking, the Lamb of God. Amen. The atonement just before the destruction. Notice, it must be a young lamb. It must be a male. The first from the mother, Yo. That was... Jesus, the first from the Virgin Mary, must be without blemish. It must be kept up and tried to see. And oh, how perfect that figured him. He was the perfect one. He, every enemy had to testify that he was. Even Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Bring me some water. Yeah. Notice, you talk about him. I could call tonight and say, Zachariah, what do you think about him? He would give his expression. I could call even Eve. She could say it, it was the seed that was promised by the woman. I could call Daniel and say, Daniel, what about you? I'll put him on trial with you. He'd say, he is the rock that was hewed out of the mountains. Amen. He's the one I said unto you. A child is born, a son is given. I could call Ezekiel and say, what do you think about him? He said, I see him like clouds under his feet. A moving. I could call John the Baptist and say, what do you think about him? He'd say, I didn't even know him. But he that told me in the wilderness set up on whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining, he's the one that will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. I could call Mary and say, Mary, what do you think about him? Mary would say, I didn't even know a man. But the Holy Ghost overshadowed me and said, that thing that will born in you will be called the Son of God. I just say it to a different ones. I say to the Roman, what do you think? You say, well, his friends will testify. What about his enemies? Let's call Pilate. After taking a pan and washing his hands and saying, I find no fault in him, but take him away, do whatever you want to, trying to find political favor. He plunged himself to death up there in Norway and Sweden. Whenever a year they go there to watch that blue water bubbling up again, claim it's the water he washed his hands from Christ. You can't wash him off your hands. No, sir, you can't. No, I look at the Roman centurion. What do you think about him? You're one of his enemies. He put his hand over his heart and said, Truly, that's the Son of God. Amen. Pilate said, I find no fault in him. First, he was standing there very bad. Oh, he is ready to condemn and everything. I hear a horse come running, galloping down the street. Here comes the, one of the temple guards. He jumps off the horse. He's got a little piece of paper folded. He runs up before Pilate and bows down, hands him the piece of paper. Old Pilate takes such an order. Early that morning, Connie hadn't had his coffee yet. He got up there and looked. He begins to turn white. His knees begin to beat together. 
Let's look over his shoulder and see what's the matter. What's written on that piece of paper? His pagan wife yes. said, have nothing to do with this just man, for I've suffered many things in a dream today because of him. Amen. Old Judas says, Kirk, what do you think about him? He said, I have betrayed innocent blood, and he got a rope in his man and had to go hang himself. Tried him. What do you think about him, God? This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Amen. Kept up. No fault in him. Sure. First one from the old mother. The mother Yo, the lamb was. Jesus was the first child of the virgin. Born to virgin birth. Of course he had to be a virgin. No. This. Now I want you to notice again. That all the assembly was to kill him. The assembly, the whole assembly. Now if you notice, watch how that reads. You can see it's a prefigure. Now watch. Fourteen days, the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And you notice, all Israel stood there and said, away with him. Let his blood be upon us and upon our children. They, from Caiaphas all the way down, witness to his death. Away with him. Give us Barabbas. You notice it? And he died at three o'clock in the evening. They shall kill it in the evening. How beautiful. And they shall take the blood and strike it upon the post of the door and upon the, the post of the house, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire, unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. I want you to notice now, bear with me. Eat it not raw or sod, nor with water, but roast with fire, its head, its legs, as proof thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until morning, and that which remain shall be burnt with fire. Notice beautifully. Now, if you kill the lamb, catch its blood and put it on the lintel of the door. That's the overpiece here. And on the post of the door. Never on the doorstep, on the floor, but on the post and on the lintel. If you'll notice it, it's the perfect cross. Amen. Oh, my. He said, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Yes. Notice, what a day! Oh, sinner man, woman, boy, or girl, let this soak into your sinful heart. Just before the coming of Christ, it's time that we take in consideration, check up on ourselves, watch. Now he said, in the evening it was killed. The lamb was on the ins- brought the inside of the house, roasted type of communion, of course. Now he said, come into that house and don't go out no more no. until morning. Hey. Amen. What under the blood. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey. Stand there. <laughs> I hope you get that now. Come under. The howling wolves can come to the windows. I can hear some of them come by, see the young lady that come in, some of the Egyptian girls, and say, Martha, aren't you going to the dance and I'd have no desire at all? No. Under the blood, something happened. The father was a priest of the house. In the old sanctuary, old time, the father always was a priest. And he had to watch over his household. What a change today! The kids watch over the dad. In the modern world. But the father was to watch over his house. He killed the lamb. He took the hossip and put it on the door, on the lintel. And that was their protection. All right, they stayed in. I see the rest of them going frolicking and carrying on. Saying, Look at that bunch of fanatics. Oh, with an old sheep blood on the door, trying to say this hocus pocus, something's going to happen. But it did. Yes, it did. Why? God said so. Yes. 
It always is the truth when God says so. Amen. There they are. Hundred of blood. They had no desire to go out. Hey. Amen. You said desire, Brother Ben? That's right. For there is therefore now, Romans 8, 1, no condemnation to them that's come in at the door. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm not amen in myself, but amen means so be it. I just feel so good I have to holler amen. Look, come in at the door. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. There you are, yeah. in Christ, desiring to do what the Holy Spirit says do. Don't care what the world's got to say. No, no. no condemnation to them that's in Him, walking after the Spirit. Those Israelites are all in there, satisfied. Amen. Yeah. Here we are. Look at it. I want you to see it now. After a while, it becomes clouds begin to rise. Uh-huh. Angry night. People begin to wonder, what's happening around here? Kind of a funny feeling. Yeah. Brother, if there ever was a funny feeling among the nations, it's tonight. Amen. Something's fixing to happen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Still a song, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Yeah. Holler. Better look on the door tonight. Check up. Throw them beer cans out of the refrigerator. That deck of cards out the door. Call a prayer meeting in your house. Amen. You may be deacon. You might be trustee. You might be this, that, or the other. But look. What we need today is an old-fashioned, God-sent, Holy Ghost, born revival. Straighten up the nation. It's true. We don't need theologies and so forth. People in their churches, they're trying to make big fine pews and big pie bargains and things. Said, I belong to this crowd, I belong to that crowd. I'm glad tonight to say as Paul of old before the king in the way that's called heresy. So worship our, the God of our fathers. Hallelujah. Heresy, crazy. Foolishness unto the world. But glorious to them that are in Christ. Enjoy dead. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Hit away in Christ. Amen. Say, well, the devil come and got me. No, he never. You went out to him. The Bible said you are dead. Your life is hid in God through Christ, sealed by the Holy Ghost. How could the devil get you? You went out. Hallelujah. That's right. The devil never got you. Notice. Beautiful. Let's give just a little drama for the children. We want them to catch it too. Now, watch. Here they are in the house. It's almost at zero hour. Things are beginning to happen. And I see them running home from the dance. They're getting in. They're bringing it up, coming home. The carriages are driving fast. A hard wind's are blowing. They can't tell where it's coming from. It's twisted this way and that way. If there isn't a time like that now, I don't know where it is. They don't know what to do. This way and that way. And the first thing you know, I hear a great hum and roar coming through the land. I see an old priestly father walking up and down the floor just as sturdy as he can be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I hear a little boy say, Daddy, I'm the oldest in this house. I'm kind of scared. Don't worry, son. The blood's on the door. <laughs> well, what's all? I never heard the wind sound like that, Daddy. That's the judgment of God. That's what we're heading for now. We've rejected mercy and there's nothing left but judgment. When you spurn the love of God, there ain't nothing left for you but judgment. That's right. Howling winds everywhere. What's all this about? Perplexed of time, distress between nations. Judgment. Yeah, you could put a, a good character in every county and you still couldn't stop it. Men are going to drink. Women are going to smoke cigarettes. You're going to go on to your shows and go on carol like you always did. 
just like a hog to its water and a dog to its vomit. Amen. No more respect for God and nothing in the world. And the people is trying to live right. You call them holy rollers and fanatics and everything else. And not knowing that your own soul's waiting the bounds. And waiting nothing but judgment. Yes, sir. I can see the little fellow say, Daddy, go out and take a look and be sure that the blood's there. I can see the little boy and girl hold hands and go to the window. Say, Daddy, come here, look here. Now look, coming across Egypt, two big black wings are folding back and forth. What is it? Death. I see it swoop down like this. I hear a scream come up from the house. There was no blood there. Death struck the family. Separation. It's passing over tonight too, brother. Not physical, spiritual. As they led the natural, he's leading the spiritual today. That was an example of Shadda. They see that down here, the woman went out screaming and all the family like that. The elder son was dead. I hear the little daddy go, little fellow go shake his daddy saying, Daddy, daddy, go look again, be sure. I can see the old father go back to the door and say, Yes, son, she's there. Uh Are you sure we're protected, daddy? Yes, sir. How you know? God said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. That's right. Watching for the blood. Here come the angels moving again. I see it move up. Swerves from place to place. I see it make a dial and go down over a house and turn back up again. I see the blood. Here it comes to this home. I see it coming to the little fellow say, Oh, Daddy, you sure? We're perfectly sure, son. And the angel slips down to the door, spreads his big wings to go in. It sees the blood and takes his flight away. Yes. Hallelujah. What's the matter? Amen. He's seen the blood. Yes. Hey. After that, listen here. And you shall eat and let... Just a moment now. Did I get this straight now? Where I want to read right here we are. And you shall let nothing ever remain until morning. Now notice the eleventh verse. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand. (laughs) Brother, you're ready. Let's turn right now over to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, just a moment, and read just a little bit here about what way we should be dressed up to along about that time. All right, Ephesians six twelve. you that are putting it down. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness and high places. Yeah. Yeah. See what our wrestle is today? Yeah. See what the death angel is? It's spiritual power, wickedness in high places, <coughs> great places, big places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the, the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about you with truth. I just hit that one because I want to get back to the subject. Watch him, he goes ahead and says the breastplate and the helmet and everything else. Wish we could dress that soldier up for you here. But we haven't got time. Let's just take the loins, gird it about with a girdle. That's the, that's the belt that holds the rest of it together. Gird your loins with truth. Amen. In the day, brother, when there's all kinds of isms and fanaticism, it's time to gird yourself with the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the truth. The truth. I'll tell you, when people say, what about this, what about that? It's good to feel that old truth buckled around you, isn't it? Knowing where you're standing, then stand there. Let them say, well, you had this, that, and the other. You know where you're standing. Have the whole armor buckled on and with a a girt around here, buckle down good and tight and pull down with the truth of God's word anchored in your heart. All devils in hell can't upset you. That's right. You can meet Satan and say, it's written. Hallelujah. Well, I tell you, brother, did you uh, take up serpents? No, sir. I believe Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Did you do this? That? No, sir. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Buckled about an armor on. Girded with truth. 
Now, they were ready while they were eating. God wants you to dress up before you eat this communion. And brother, before you can correctly eat it, you have to dress up. Amen. For the Holy Spirit that's in your heart or bring the Holy Spirit lives on the Word of God. You know what's the matter with the church today, brethren? I believe the church has got an anemia condition. Yeah. The, the blood's gone out of it. <laughs> For instance, what if I was a doctor? And a great big man, six foot tall, come up to me and say, Say, uh, a doctor, I, I'm so weak I can't get up. I, I, I'm just staggering around. I say, What's the matter? Well, I don't know. I'm just so weak. I'd say, Well, uh, did uh, certain physical things? Yes, that's all right. And I say, Well, when did you eat last? Well, you're about a 180 pound man. I eat a half a cracker a day before yesterday. I'd say, man, you're just starved to death. Go get a good square meal and you won't be so weak. And that's what's the matter at the church today. We're big in numbers, but brother, we're starved to death. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're scared the neighbor's going to say something. What we need is a good old-fashioned Holy Ghost shaking. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Both hands up in the air and say, Lord, feed me. The buckle and the armor on, marching on. The phenomenal have been done. In the 38th verse, we read this. And a mixed multitude also went up with them, and the flocks, and the herds of the cattle. Brother, a mixed multitude. The phenomenal have been done. A big revival was on. People were getting saved, coming in. And a group went up impersonating that. They went up acting like they were believers. Sure, they put on their sandals and everything and got ready. But that same mixed multitude that taken communion and went on the march was the very ones that began to murmur and call the children of, heart, of Israel their hearts to turn back to Egypt again. That's, right. That's what it is tonight, brother. Have a revival. And there'll be a mixed multitude. Oh, Certain as anything. Yes. Some of them will try to come in and impersonate. Yes. When you talk of predestination, someone called me the other day, said, what about it then? If God's predestinated, I said, just read Romans the 8th chapter and 9th and you'll understand. Amen. And I said, God has mercy on whom he will have mercy. What's used to preaching then? I said, that's your and our business as ministers. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like unto a man went to the sea with a net in his hand. He threw the net out in. He pulled it in. That was the gospel. In there he had turtles, water bugs, serpents, green frogs, snakes, everything else. And he had some fish in there. Hallelujah. The first thing you know when the revival was over and the gospel net comes off, the old turtle said, I know there was nothing to it. The old water bug said, I believe it also right back to the hog like to its water. The servants say, I didn't believe it in the first place. But there's some fish there too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time for ministers to throw the gospel and put it in. God knows what's fish. He was a turtle to begin with and he was a feast to begin with. God knows which is which. I don't. It's my business to throw the net in the stream and pull them out and say, Hey, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Sure it is. That's the gospel net. You know, the day today I went here not long ago to a place that said we're going to have communion. And they took an old piece of loaf bread and cut it up like this in pieces and passed it out amongst a bunch of people there. And everybody in the church taking communion. Brother, that's not right. Your heart's got to be right with God before you take communion. Isaiah prophesied of it, the 28th chapter, in the 8th verse, if you want to look it up. He said, the tables are full of vomit. All of filthiness and uncleansiness everywhere. He said, who can I teach doctrine? Who can I give understanding? Those that are weaned from the breast. Our little babies back here playing along when we ought to be teaching somebody else the powers of God. We're still fussing about what's right to do this or that. Tables full of vomit. I can't stop there. Let's move on. I got to get to the place. All right. They had their armors on their guard. They marched out. They come right straight up to the Red Sea. Pharaoh was glad to let them go. 
And when they got up to the Red Sea, there they see his army come pursuing them. And there they was camped. Right there, the mountains and deserts on his side, Pharaoh's army coming this way, the Red Sea before him. But God's path led through the Red Sea. Amen. As long as I know his path is leading, that's all I care about. That's Just keep right. on walking. Said Moses, hallelujah, take that stick. Walk down towards that water. Uh-huh. Amen. What's going to happen, Lord? That's none of your business. Just keep walking. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Preach the gospel, Tom Meredith, and the rest of you, God. Yeah. What's going to happen? It's none of your business. Just preach on. Amen. Give God praise. Here we go. Moving down there. One of the writers said that God was in that pillar of fire. And he looked down through with angry eyes. And said when he did, the Red Sea got scared and began to move back. And Israel passed through on dry land. Never even got their feet muddy. Well, these guys come along and said, we're just as human as they are. And we worship the same as they do, so we'll do it. And when it got out there, they found out they couldn't make it. And that's what's going to happen one of these days, brother, when the separating time comes. And to you, you lukewarm church member. That you're trying to impersonate Christianity. One of these days you're going to try to follow that Holy Ghost band and you'll find out your wheels will come off out of in the middle of somewhere. Right? There was ten virgins went to meet the Lord. Five of them were wise and five foolish. Put all in your lamp. Tremor bright. One of these days they're going up and there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And those uncircumcised Egyptians. Why couldn't they make it if they wasn't circumcised? They wasn't in the covenant. If it had been circumcised believers, God would have had to recognize them as same as he recognized Israel. Glory! Oh, I wish I was twice my size right now. I feel religious. I really do. Notice! They were uncircumcised. They wasn't in the covenant, though they were a man. They were dressed just as nice and better. They lived just as good. They had better homes. They was in a better class of people. Worldly thinking. Yeah. They went to church the same as the rest of them did. They had followed right along. Don't tell me they didn't know anything about God. Joseph had already told them and spread the news down there 400 yeah. years before. Yeah. Sure they did. But they thought that bunch of fanatics, we can do anything they can, but they failed. Yeah. God only recognized the circumcision. There they went, no wonder little old David stood and said, Do you mean to tell me that the armies of the living God will stand here and let that uncircumcised Philistine defy the armies of the living God? He said, Put me on something, let me go. Yes, yes sir. Give us some more David. When they come across the stream, got on the other side, God just closed it in. There was the old taskmasters. Could you imagine how them Jews fell? Look back there, and there was the very thing. That had made it, whooped them and beat their back in distraction, pulled them over like this, was dead floating in the sea. That's right. Brother, when you come through the Red Sea of the blood of Jesus Christ, every old dirty habit that's drove you to things that you wouldn't do, you'll find it dead in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Right. Floating on down the stream. No wonder Moses got the Spirit. <laughs> now, you talk about we having some kind of new kind of religion. Look at this. Marrying them. A prophetess. She looked out there. She picked up a tambourine. <laughs> and she began to beat it. And dance. And she went down the banks of the sea. Dancing. Beating his tambourine. And the daughters of Israel followed her. Dancing and singing. And beating his tambourine. And Moses raised up his hands. And got so caught away in the Holy Ghost. Till he sung in the spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That same Holy Ghost as old Moses is in this building tonight. Hallelujah. Same one that made Miriam dance this year tonight. God is God and changes not. Yes, sir. Then he said, look at that bunch of fanatics. But there wasn't anybody to make fun then. It's all gone. They had it all to themselves. Oh, it'll be glory by and by. <laughs> How a wonderful time. Look at them. Let's watch them for a few minutes now. If we can get them to the rock in the next few minutes. If we possibly get them late now. Excuse me. But I just feel so good I can't quit right now. So hold on just a minute, if you will. 
Let's look at him a little bit. Oh, I like to watch him. As the big song was over, the big shout and the a hallelujah big time, they started through the wilderness and led them right straight to bitter waters. Yeah. Isn't that strange? Right. Oh, my. Right into temptation. Yeah. Right into where the waters was bitter and they couldn't drink. They had nothing to eat. Nothing to eat and the waters were bitter. And look, that stream of Mara, bitter waters, laid right in God's path. He was leading his children. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Isn't it strange? Yes. Looked like God would have bypassed that. Uh-huh. But he led him right straight up to that water. Yes, sir. Some through the waters, some through the floods, some through deep trials, but all through the blood. Amen. That's God's way of leading his people. Amen. Yes. Stay there. What can we do? Hallelujah. We follow the Lord. We've come to the blood. We separate ourselves. Moses said, stand still. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And in every temptation, he'll make a way of escape. Oh, yeah. That was a little bush standing on the side there. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. He cut out that bush and threw it in the water. And that water becomes sweet, bubbling up, joyful. What another shouting time they have. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right when the devil backs you in the corner and says, I got him right now, boy. He can't move now. I got him right now. Then the Lord will come along and the cross will drop before us and hallelujah, away we'll go. Doctors say, can't be nothing done for you at all, my. <laughs> oh, somebody said, you know, you're going crazy, you lose your mind or something like that. Then God will come along and pour out a blessing on you. Amen. Just forget about it. God knows where he's leading. Amen. Whew. I'm having an awful time here. I tell you. Notice, they didn't have anything to eat. That little bunch of bread they had, they don't eat it up. What are we going to do now? I said, all of you go on to bed and fast tonight. <laughs> you ever try it? It's good sometimes. Yeah. And the next morning you went out, and there lay little wafers laying all over the ground. Uh-huh. God had done rain some bread down out of heaven. Well, he picked it up and began to taste it. Why, well, it says it tastes like honey uh-huh. and wafer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Does what? Tastes like honey. They begin to eat it. Said, well, it's good. And they just begin to gather and eat for who wouldn't have it. Tastes like honey in the rock. You know, I always said, David, with that little sheep shepherd sling here, bag, script bag he had, he always carried honey in there, you know. And whenever some of his sheep would get sick, he'd put the honey out there and he would rub, rub it on a limestone rock, which was an old cure. And the first thing you know, the sheep would get up there and go to licking on that rock. And when they licked on that rock, they'd lick the honey off, they'd lick the limestone and get healed. Isn't that wonderful? Well, I got a whole script bag full of honey here tonight, and I'm going to put it on the rock, Christ Jesus, and all you little sheep go to licking on that rock, lick, 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 and you're sure to come out of it. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. It last as long as they was in the journey. And it did last. It never did cease. Now, they're just together enough every night to last until the next night. Yes, if they left any over and said, now we'll gather in a whole lot tonight, we won't go back to the revival tomorrow night. We'll just gather in a whole lot tonight, and then tomorrow night, we'll have plenty left at home. No, no, that got wiggle tails in it. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what's the matter with a lot of people's experience. You say, well, brother, I used to have the joy. You try to store up something. Brother, what I had last night, done gone. Oh, my God, now! Hallelujah! Amen! Some people's experience is like the broken sisters. You know. That's right. Let's get a new stage every night. Make a new step every night. And it represented, that's exactly the truth, brother. Yes, sir. That's right. What we need is an old fashioned Holy Ghost. Oh, we got plenty of churches. Oh, my. Fine members. Oh, plenty of money in the churches nowadays. Sure. Much as you want to tear the church on. We got all that, but we ain't got no fire. Could you imagine uh, going down here at the car works and building a big fine string of a locomotive here, getting a fine educated man who knows how to run, sitting down on a plush seat and all the people's in, say, well, let's go. He push, push. Ain't nothing to go. He reached up and said, better pull the whistle. He hasn't even got enough steam up the whistle. <laughs> That's why a lot of people ain't even got enough steam up to say amen. <laughs> you can have that free. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Civilization come by fire. Yeah. 
Go back and find the tribes that use fire. Fire makes my clothes. Fire makes the light. Fire cooks my dinner. Everything comes by fire. If you live in modern civilization, you live by fire. If you live in the divine presence of God, you're baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Right. They throwed some steam in there, brother. Got the old boiler cooking and popping and jumping and bubbling. The first thing you know, you pull the whistle and away down the track she goes. <laughs> That's right. That's what we need. Reminds me one time, brother and I was up here at Lanky St. Creek. We was walking along and had an old turtle. And that's a funny looking thing. It's still on feet when he walked. I got my little girl, two of them, the other day, about that big. I stand there the other day watching them little flowers, and I'd laugh. He tried to rub his head with his foot like that. I was looking at him, and just as soon as you touch him, or something, he goes, uh-huh. right back up in the shell. Yeah. That's just the way of some of this old coal farmer religion we got today. Right. I'll never go back to that revival again. I belong to the Presbyterian, the Methodist, the Lutheran. I belong to this. Hallelujah. He disagreed with me. I'm, I'm back up in the show. Go on. Oh, that old clothes and turtle religion. I said, I'll fix him up. And I took him down to the creek. First, I got a stick. I tried to beat him. That didn't do no good. Just didn't do a bit of good. He just laid there. And I just whooped him as hard as he could. And he just laid there. You can't beat it into him. Not at this. No. No need to try it. Threatening him and everything. And I took him down. I said, I'll fix him up. I stuck him down the water. Just a few bubbles come up and just stayed the same way. Brother, <laughs> you can sprinkle them, pour them backwards, forwards, and you want to. They go down a dry center and come up a wet one. That's all. Still a center. You know how I made him move? I went and got me a handful of sticks and built a little fire and set the old boy on it. He moved then, brother. I tell you, what the church needs today is the old time Holy Ghost fire killed everywhere. Glory to God, that's what we need. Fire will move the church and nothing else. That's right. Yes, sir. Well, that was a type, a beautiful type. Yes, sir. That represented something when that manna was falling. That meant God gave them that after they passed through the Red Sea, type of the blood. And the past masters was dead. God had to sustain their life. And he had to give them something. Being that separate themselves from the homeland. And they was out in the wilderness. They were pilgrims there. They were in a journey. And God had to sustain their life. So he promised he would supply everything they had need of. So he did it. And he rained the manna down. It was a beautiful time. On the day of Pentecost. When this church was inaugurated. The Holy Ghost Church. They separated from all their churches and everything else to come out to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they were waiting there. What are we going to do? Our master's gone up to heaven, but he told us to wait here a while. Yeah. Just to stick around a little while. He's going to send us something to take us through. <laughs> oh, I'm so hungry, said Peter to see him. Yeah. John said, oh, Peter, what would you do to see him? <laughs> well, I said, oh, I'm sorry. I denied him out there. I'll never do it again. And all of a sudden there came from heaven a sound like a rushing mighty wind come down. Not some Roman man with his collar turned around the back come up to give him kosher or some kind of a communion. Not some Protestant preacher saying, I give you the right hand of fellowship, give him six months of probation, put his name on the book. No, no. But that's the way we do it today. But brother, I'm telling you, it was like a rushing mighty wind come from heaven. Build all the house where they were sitting. Hallelujah. Brother, the building wasn't big enough to hold him. Out into the street, they were screaming, jumping, dancing. And... Hey, Wait a minute, sister. The birds that Mary was in there, too. Yeah. There yeah. she was, yeah. acting like she was drunk. Could you imagine the birds that Mary? Could you imagine saying that in a Catholic church, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, or somewhere? No. The birds that Mary was under the influence of the Holy Ghost, yeah. acting like somebody drunk. Yeah. And if God made the mother of Jesus Christ go up there to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost before she could go to heaven, you'll never get there anything shorter than that. Amen. Might as well get the starch out of your collars and come off them. That's right, like old Naaman. When Naaman went down to get his uh, Elijah said he go down and duck seven times or dip seven times. Oh my, how that hurt his prestige. Yeah. Mm. Said, is the water up there just as good as in my church just as good? No. I'll sit down here. <laughs> well, now, Brother Brandon, if we go over and we believe this and believe that, and we'll have a nice church and treat everybody nice, and I'll pay a little money and more. No, sir. Uh-huh. Except 
the man be born again, he'll in no wise enter the kingdom. Amen. So I can see him walking out there by pulling his feet out of the mud like a tomcat molasses, you know, walking out there. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll have to do it. Stop that. I want to hurt his <laughs> Come back up to let his leprosy. The prophet said seven times. Amen. But after he had done seven times, his skin come to him clean again. Brother, I'm telling you, some people say, I don't believe it. I have to get the altar and boo-hoo and cry around and snort around like the rest of them do. Stay back there then. That's right. I'll take oh. the way with the Lord this by few. Amen. I started to with Jesus. Lord, take me through. This old gospel has helped me, brother. When I stand standing there before witch doctors, it's helped me with maniacs from the platform that I'll play in this night. It stood by me in the hours of temptation when the airplanes is ducked down with the pilots white in their face. That old gospel stood by me when the doctor said he's got three minutes to live. It stood by me then. It's good now. How are you? I still love it. Can't get enough of it. That's right. Well, what does that represent to us? All right. When we all got drunk on this new manna. Huh? Yep. Come from out of heaven. Now Moses never said, bake a few extra loaves and I didn't have none to bake with. They were aliens. They, they were pilgrims and strangers. And so they didn't have none to bake with. And God reigned it out of heaven. Is that right? Yes, sir. And as God reigned it out of heaven, he reigned the Holy Ghost out of heaven. Yes, sir. What did he say? Now what did Moses say back there? He said, Aaron, I want you fellows to go out there. I put on your jackets now. <laughs> All right. I want you fellows to go out there. And get a several big omerfuls of this. And I want you to take it in and keep it. Put it back. It was kept in the holiest of holies. It didn't deteriorate. It was kept in the holy place. So what's this for? That all down to your generations, every priest that's ordained to be a priest that comes into the holy place, that you might go in there to these omers and pick up some of the original manna and come out and lay it on his tongue and let him have a taste because he's worthy, he's a priest, and now come behind the veil. Now you have a taste of the original man that fell in the beginning. That's what he said. Is that right? Yes. And that's what went down to the age. Now what's that got to do with Pentecost? Oh, and they were all eating that good manna and screaming and shouting and carrying on out there like a bunch of, of drunk people. Why? Wow. Someone said, what can we do? Peter said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, for you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children, and to them is for all, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Right. Amen. Hallelujah! Every man that meets God's conditions and becomes a priest to come in behind the veil and separate himself from the world receives not only a mouthful, but a heartful of the original manna that fell on the day of Pentecost. Not something looks like it, but some of the real thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Right. Yeah, they went just moving on. How long is it going to last until Jesus comes? The manna lasted until they hit the other land and got some of the old corn. Is that right? Amen. Amen. Now, what time we got? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm only 25 minutes late. My, that's strange for me to run that much over, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Just in a moment. Well, I got five more minutes to make it a half hour even. How that? I don't know. Let's get over here to hit the text right quick. They went through the wilderness. Look at the people, just like it is today. Ministers, don't be discouraged. Look here, just like what, but remember, them murmurs, not one of them ever hit the other land. Not one of them. But they murmured and complained. They had left the garlic pots of Egypt and was eating angels' food and complaining about it. Is that right? Well, brother, if you were saying, I don't know what I'll do. My husband will leave me. Let him leave. You separate from everything. He that won't forsake his own and clean to me is not worthy of me. I don't know what Mama says. What do you care what Mama says? It's what Jesus says. Hmm? Yeah. Well, I'm afraid my soul and circle will break up. Well, break it up. Yeah. What about literary society, all these other things I've gone to, parents, teachers, and all this? What if I got down there and got to shouting? Well, shout. An old man one time. He got all filled up with the Holy Ghost. What a wonderful time he was having. 
His, his daughter is staying with her. He'd get the Bible, he'd read, and then he'd get up and he'd just cry and walk up and down the floor. She's going to have one of these little pink tea parties, you know. So she got the old man, so she said, I'll fix him up. She said, Papa, there's a woman coming today. He said, I know you won't want to fool around with them women. I said, no. I said, I'm going to give you a nice book to read. He said, you go up in the garret and read while we're having a party. He said, all right. He said, he'll never find nothing there to shout about. So he gets up there and she gave him a geography. So he got up there and began to turn the pages and said, hmm, Europe, Asia. One over there said, the sea. He looked down and began, said, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He began to stop the girl said, well, what's going on? He said, oh, something's wrong with Father. We must run up the steps. He went and got up there and he hollered, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. She said, Daddy, what's the matter? I said, oh, honey, you give me this good book to read. And I read the other word said, the sea ain't got no bottom. And Jesus said he put my sins in the sea of forgiveness and remember me. said, they're still going. Hallelujah. 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 Sure. Still going. He ain't got no bottom. See, you're up on top. The you're just going on. Just keep coming home. Just keep on going. Hallelujah. That's right. Complaining. Always murmuring. I don't know what to do. Oh, my. Murmuring. Left the garlic pots to eat angel food. Left the boasting physicians of Egypt to be with the great physician. Left a bunch of people who said, the days of miracles is past. My goodness, to be with those people where miracles, all things are possible. Right with that, but still complaining. <laughs> That's right. What a condition. They left the muddy waters of Egypt to drink from the fountain that never run dry. Still complaining. No wonder their supply was cut off. <laughs> That's what's the matter today. The supply has been cut off because you're murmuring too much. What about the pastor, the deacons, my church says, oh, quit, run out to Christ. Yeah. It's part of the, and the first thing you know, Moses said, bring him out here. Bring him out here. And God said, speak to the rock and it will bring forth its water. And when he spoke to the rock, now he took first and smote that rock with a rod. And when he smote that rock, that rod was God's judgment rod. Amen. It wasn't a rod of Moses. God held, had Moses in his hand. And what that rod was in Moses' hand is Jesus' name in the church today. Amen. That's right. That's the truth, brother. If those Egyptians could have ever got that rod out of his hand, he was powerless. If they ever take the name of Jesus away from the church and get you away, you'll go out and blaspheme it and make fun of it and everything else and try to come in and pray. And if you can't do that, you've got to keep it sacred. That's right. Oh, take the name of Jesus with you, a child of sorrow and of woe. When temptations around you gather, breathe that holy name in prayer. Devils will scatter like roaches on a floor when the lights turned on. <laughs> Truly, here they are. Mine. He said, bring him out there, and he took this judgment rod, and he smote the rock. Yes. And when he hit the rock, there was a cliff in the side of the rock. And that rock was Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God yes. that God's judgment for you and I, a wicked sinner, worthy of death, worthy of separation, God's judgment was the day you eat thereof, that day you die. Yes, and his judgment smote him on Calvary, and there he hung, bleeding, bleeding, dying, Adam's lamb hanging there. Abel's lamb, brother. Yes. Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And out of there, a very beautiful parable. What was that lifted up for? The brazen serpent for healing. Compound reason when they needed healing, they lifted up a brass serpent. Why was it? Because they were murmuring, chatting against God and Moses. And it was for a compound reason. For they were murmuring, sinning, and they were sick and needed healing. And Moses, uh, Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the brass serpent in the wilderness, just for the same purpose, same cause, same atonement, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Amen. Compound reason. The Savior soul and the smitten rock that brought forth the water that belched out into the land to save a perishing people. God so loved the world of the New Testament, the type of it, the inner type, brother. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. There you are. As 
says that was for a perishing, dying, helpless people that the brass serpent is lifted up, the smitten rock was smitten to give forth life and healing and peace to those people. So God lifted up his son that you should not perish but would have everlasting life. Amen. My brother, sister, I pray you'll accept him tonight. Yeah. I'm sorry I bundled my lesson up. I, I haven't been preaching for a long time. You excuse me for my emotions, but how good I feel. Yeah. And you excuse me, I'll settle down in a few more days so I can teach. Tonight, that same angel of God that's pictured on that paper is right here at this platform. What is it? It's the angel of the covenant. It's the Lord Jesus Christ identifying himself. The Lord bless you. May you receive him now as your personal Savior. I'm waiting for my altar call until the Holy Spirit gives me the leading to do it. And I believe God's going to fill this church with the Holy Ghost. So you'll hear a scream. It'll, it'll swing out through Jeffersonville here. I'm waiting and praying every day and night, waiting just for the crucial moment. You keep fasting. Keep praying. Get the kids together. Get rid of all the sin around your home. As Jacob said, take off your earrings and wash your garments. Get ready. Oh, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. May the Lord bless you now. Look to the Lamb of God while we bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, that beautiful church moving on in full armor and their clothes never got threadbare. Their shoes never come off of their feet. Forty years in the wilderness and there wasn't a feeble one among them. No doctors, earthly doctors, just the great physician. No millineries, no nothing to make clothes with, but the great creator was there who kept their clothes from getting threadbare. They had to go through deep waters and burning sands, push through briar patches and take mountains. Everything was in the way, but that great pillar of fire was leading the way. On on before us, move, O morning star. Guide us and direct us. Forgive us of our sins and help us to be your servants, Lord. Take these few scattered words that I've stood here with, Lord, reading from your word. And I pray that you'll sink it deep in every heart. And may it never perish, but may you give them eternal life. And while we have our head down, is there a person in here with every eye closed? Would you raise your hand and say, Brother Branham, please remember me. I, I'm lost and I, I, I don't know Jesus as my Savior. I haven't been born again. I want you to pray for me. Will you raise your ha hand just now? Step up your hand so I can offer prayer. God bless you. Many of you have got your hands up everywhere in the building. That's wonderful. God bless you. Everywhere else, say, Brother Branham, I know if God should call my soul, that germ of life isn't in me. That's not in me. I don't know him that way. I, I really don't know him that way. I've never been really born again. But I want to be. I want to be. And I want you to pray for me. Would you raise your hand now? Someone else would raise your hand. About a dozen hands. All right, thank you. God bless you, sister. And someone else. All right. Now, God bless you. 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 All right. Now, someone in here that and wants to be remembered in prayer, you're sick. And say, Brother Bram, remember me. I'm sick. We haven't had a healing service because we count it all into the gospel. But I do pray for the sick. Now, if you raise your hand, say, remember me, I'm sick, Brother Branham. All right. That's several hands up again. That's sick. All right. While we have our heads bowed, Lord, please save that sinner, Lord. Backslider, grant it, Lord. Bring them up to the house tonight and feed them a good. May they go away from here tonight and renew their covenant. May that poor sinner... May his pillow feel like rocks tonight. May he just can't rest. Oh, God, that's terrible. It seems like to the man to pray like that. But, oh, God, anything, don't let his soul be lost. That's, if, what if he'd go out of this world, Lord, without knowing you? Oh, I pray that you'll be with him. Help him. Help her too, Lord, everyone. And now the sick here, Lord. May, as Moses lifted up that serpent, and everyone that looked at the serpent, the serpent never prayed for no one. They just looked and lived. They looked and lived. And everyone that looked, lived. Lord, may the sick and afflicted of this, it's in this building tonight, look to the cross yonder. See that Prince of Peace hanging there. The antitype of the serpent. 
reason it was a serpent of sin, and he was made sin for us. Lord, I pray that you'll heal every one of them just now. May the Holy Spirit move right through their, surge through their beings just now and heal them of their infirmities. Bless those, Lord, who are in the way, wayfaring man, all oh, men and women here who fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas, stood bitter persecution and domestic troubles and everything, and still waving on, oh, morning star, lead on, Lord Jesus. Some of these glorious days, our great ship will leave the harbor yonder. We'll hear the old ship of Zion blow when she comes dashing through that fog in the room when death sets in on us. Our loved ones are screaming, we'll hear her blow. Yes. Hallelujah. She'll move right down through that fog to the bedside. We'll step our feet on there. Land over yonder in that land where we'll never grow. I'm wrinkled to leave the face. Hallelujah. Gray hairs will vanish away. And we'll have a body like his own glorious body. We shall see him as he is and meet our loved ones in that happy land. Give them courage. Oh, God, move upon this city and send in sinners that there might be a great revival of the soul. Grant it, Lord. Be with us now and for the part of the service. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. The Lord bless you. Now, as you leave, I'll ask the brother ushers if they'll come forth and get the little books there and the pictures. And each one of them gets this to Brother Usher and the, and the little and the picture there. If you desire one, we're not selling books. We're not selling it. If you want them, all right. If you don't, that's just, we just got them for that purpose. Would you brothers come forward now and get them, if you will? Brother Cox and Brother Fleeman and some stand at each door there if the people want them. How many love the Lord? Say, Amen. Amen. All right. I wonder if the sister, they got the baby there in her arm, the sister player. Or, here, if she said, that's all right. If you're up, come right ahead here just a moment, if you will. And give us a card on the piano. Now, remember, the services start tomorrow night. You know where we're going to start tomorrow night? We're going to take the children of Israel up to Kadesh Barnea. That's the judgment seat. And there Joshua and Caleb will go over and bring back. And then if the Lord willing, Sunday morning on these, these uh, questions and answers, the Lord being willing, we'll have it. And Sunday night, we want to take the children over into the homeland. Hallelujah. The Jordan rolled back and their muddy streams rolled away. And they go up to the walls of Jericho and let out a shout. And down comes the wall and they take over. Hallelujah. We watch that scarlet thread there from uh, Rahab the harlot hanging down there where she uh, let the spies down. Then, the Lord willing, next week we may go plumb on through over into the book of Revelations down through Daniel. Hallelujah. And have a glorious, wonderful time. You love the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, how many knows this song? Give us a little. Yes, don't forget. Let's see if we can sing it without music now. How many knows our little old song here? Don't forget the family prayer. All right, now let's start slowly. Don't forget the family prayer. Jesus wants to meet you there. He will take your every care. Oh, don't forget the family prayer. How many of you have family prayer? Let's see. Now oh, she's got the card up now. She's got, let's try it now. Come on. Don't forget the family prayer. Oh, Jesus wants to meet you there. He will take your every care. Oh, don't forget the family prayer. Now shall we stand just a moment? Now while we sing the first verse, I want you to turn around, shake hands with your neighbor, say, my name is John Dole. I'm glad you were here in the tabernacle tonight. I hope to see you again. The Lord bless you now. But don't leave. We're going to be dismissed in a regular respective way just in a little bit. You brothers, go to the doors, if you will. All right now. Take the name of Jesus. Go back and shake hands. Now turn around. That's right. Shake hands now. Make up. If you got anything against anybody, go back and shake hands and say, no, we're pilgrims together. Everywhere you go, a precious name.
Jesus now. At the name of Jesus now. and be with us tomorrow night if you can. If you haven't got a post of duty, be with us. Now, Elder Steele from Portsmouth, Ohio, just come in standing here on the front row. We're going to ask him to dismiss us in a word of prayer. All right, Brother Steele.